Hi guys and welcome back to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. In this week's video I'm going to be sharing with you how my son and I created this cross stitch hoop art. I'm going to be showing you the steps that we followed from creating the design from scratch, drawing it onto the fabric, cross stitching over it and finishing off the back of our hoop so that it was ready to give as a gift. This is a great one to do if you have got children around who want to get involved and produce a really lovely handmade gift to give to someone special. You don't need that many supplies. The project itself doesn't need to be that big. It can be really simple and easy to do and it makes such a difference when someone receives something like this that has been especially made just for them. So first off you're going to need some coloured embroidery thread. Here we're using these four different shades from these large cones that we have here at Caterpillar Cross Stitch but you can use any colours that you want to and this is also a great way of using up any old threads that you've got left over from other projects. You're also going to need some fabric that you can cross stitch on. Here we've got some 14 count Ada just because it's the quickest to stitch on I find. Also I've got here a clover eraser pen. There are lots of different brands of pens like this on the market that you can wash out or that disappear when you place another pen on top of it, which I'll show you exactly what happens with this one really, really soon. So I've put the fabric here into an embroidery hoop. This is a six inch beechwood hoop and I've given the eraser pen to my son and I've asked him to draw a portrait of his teacher that this is going to be given to. I told him as long as he stays within the hoop, he can pretty much draw whatever he likes. So he's drawn a portrait of her, some hearts, and he's also writing on the year 2020 so that she doesn't forget when it was given to her. If they make a mistake, you can easily use the other end of this eraser pen to rub that section out and start again or change the design as you go. My son doesn't concentrate for that long, so it was quite an achievement to get him to draw this in one go and then he went off to play while I had a go at stitching over it. So really just use these lines as a guide. You can adapt it while you're stitching. You can change a corner or, you know, make something a little bit smoother if you need to. I've started here with her hair, which is actually blonde in real life, but we've got this sort of bright yellow lime colour. Um, but you know, it's artistic, it's just a representation. So I've started off just following along the lines that my son drew. I'm doing half stitches for a lot of it and then going back over to complete the stitch. If you're completely new to cross stitch and you want to learn how to get going for beginners, I'll link in the description box down below another video which shows you really clearly zoomed in exactly how you can actually do these stitches. But these are full stitches. I'm forming an X, they're relatively straightforward, so I'm just doing the hair really. I've put the needle on my Positivity Rules Rainbow Needle Minder, which is one that I designed to go with our Positivity Rules Cross Stitch Kit, which is available on the website if you're interested in that. Always handy to have a needle minder nearby. I've moved on to some other sections of the design. I thought I'd do the hearts in the purple, she does have blue eyes, I think. Um, and then we've got the lovely nose and mouth. We're doing this kind of coral peach colour. If there are any sections of the blue pen um, that are still showing up, even when you've stitched on top, you can see here I'm just using the other end, the eraser section, to get rid of those. This is actually one of my favourite things to do. It's really therapeutic. I loved going over these sections and just watching them disappear literally within seconds. The OCD part of me wanted to make corrections and change this slightly, but I really tried to keep it an accurate representation of what my son had drawn. After all, it's his artwork for his own teacher. And I think the little quirks really give it character and make it truly personalized. I'm trimming off all of the edges of the fabric on the back of the hoop. I've finished all of the cross stitches now and I've erased all of the blue so you can no longer see any of that. I've trimmed the Ada fabric all the way around just so that there isn't too much hanging around. And I have found this DMC which is a sort of a very pale mushroom colour. Um, I just had it in my stash. It doesn't actually match the fabric perfectly but no one's going to see this section. I'm splitting the strands here from six and I'm only going to stitch with two or three 
just because otherwise it would be too thick to go through the Ada fabric, but I want it to be strong enough that it's really going to hold those different sides of the fabric together. So thread your needle. I'm using a size 24 DMC needle here to go with the 14 count Ada fabric and I'm tying a few knots in the end. You've got to tie quite a few in the end because you don't want that knot to pull through the Ada which is more likely with Ada fabric than with a normal cotton because obviously it's a grid and there are holes in it. So I'm just going to start stitching from the underside of the Ada fabric and go over the top. So I'm bringing the thread up and going to the complete opposite side of the hoop, pulling it underneath, pulling it tight, not too tight at this stage, but you can sort of keep the tension up as you go along and make it tighter when you've done the next stitches. So continue to do this, slowly moving your needle around the hoop as you go, making sure all of those edges are nicely taut, they're tied in and you haven't got any fabric sort of wafting around anywhere, ready for our next stage. So when you finished off, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, some kind of a spider's web style. Um, tie a knot in the end when you finish with it, preferably underneath so that it won't show up too much and all of the edges should be nicely stitched together. Next, I'm going to add another piece of fabric here just to give it a bit of backing, just to give the design itself a bit of protection. You can use some kind of wadding here, something maybe a little bit thicker. I just didn't have anything in the house at the time. Also, I found this lovely rose floral print fabric, which is just a plain cotton really, just relatively thin. So I'm just cutting out, I've measured the diameter of the hoop, so I've cut the Ada fabric and also the floral fabric that's going to be on top that's going to finish it off. So it looks nice from behind, not that anyone's really going to see the back, but it is nice if you're giving it as a gift to have it finished off nicely. The separate piece of Ada underneath just gives this floral fabric a little bit more structure to it when I'm stitching around the edge here. So I've got more embroidery floss or thread here in a pale pink, which I thought would work quite well with the flowers. I'm doing a really simple blanket stitch all the way around the edges to attach the original Ada fabric that's in the hoop with the Ada underneath and the cotton floral fabric on the top. I'm starting on the edge nearest to the hoop to attach that firmly and then I'm hooking it under the floral cotton, bring it back up and then pushing the needle through that again to do a relatively neat blanket stitch. This isn't the most perfect stitching of this type. I'm much better with X's um, but here you can see the finished thing. It's okay. I think it's nice. It's whimsical. It's handmade and that's the whole point of it. So this will keep the back really nice and secure and you can see the finished work of art here. I've also attached here a piece of this navy velvet ribbon that I found in our sewing box, which I thought that'd be nice for when she's hanging it up so that it's almost ready to go and put on the wall. And that's the finished thing. So here you can see the exact reaction of what happens when you give someone something that is a portrait of them created by a child and completely handmade for them with love. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you give this a go. It doesn't need to be necessarily with a child. You can draw something out yourself and stitch over it. I just really loved using this eraser pen and then finishing it off in a six inch hoop. It was really quick to do and it's a great way to give a gift either to a teacher or to someone else that you love for Christmas. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to catch more cross-stitch related videos coming up weekly. Thanks guys and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.